Awesome. Good morning, Vaughn. How are you today? Good morning, Clarissa. I'm great, thank you. How about you? Good, good. How are things in St. Andrews? Well, today's a sunny day. It's a good day. Yeah. Um, it's, a it's, it's a lonely day for a lot of us, but uh, yeah, it's good. It is, yeah. Uh, in Miramichi today, it's a little chilly. I don't think winter wants to leave us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's no place, it's no place to go. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah, that's right. So um, you're a new mentor with Oasis. Um, our, our, our pilot session was supposed to roll out in Charlotte County this spring, and unfortunately, due to COVID, we, we, had to, we have to push that start date. Um, but we're really happy to have you as a, a new mentor um, in the Oasis program. You wanted to tell us a little bit about who is Vaughn and uh, kind of how you came to uh, you know, to St. Andrews and, and uh, kind of your, uh, your history of, of what makes you passionate about small business owners. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I'm excited about being uh, a mentor to the program and to some of the fantastic people I know I'll meet when, when it all starts to take place. Um, I actually have been uh, an entrepreneur in the high-tech industry for a number of years. I started a company called the Canadian Continuous Learning Initiative back in the mid 90s, uh, which if it was going today would be so appropriate yes. to the online learning environment. Absolutely. Um, and then I started a .com in uh, 1999 called charity.ca. And it was about uh, giving money to charity online. So my background has been to a great extent working with uh, computer companies on applications and ideas about how to use technology uh, to make things better. Okay. When I moved to St. Andrews in 2002, I started a consulting company, which was basically helping uh, high-tech startups, mostly high-tech startups uh, or charities on defining who they were, what they were, um, how they got customers, and you know, essentially for many of them, how they get funding in order to survive those uh, terrible first two years of operation when uh, you're handling everything you can with as little cash as you can. So mm -hmm. I have a, a very close relationship with um, startup companies and small businesses. I think that's where to a great extent you're going to find the people who are the most genuine and the most real and have the most passion about getting something done because if it's a group uh, that works without a safety net, then, then that is the group. Um, yes. uh, but they also have a passion for wanting to do something to make a difference. And so I find them uh, great to work with. And, uh, and when I can, I uh, try to get them um, further along in their business plan, if you will, how they how they uh, figure out what to say to the right people when and mm. how to get customers. So that was basically and, what I did for 15 years. Okay. And you, and that, you know, you'd be a really popular guy right now because, you know, so many people are looking for that, um, you know, that the money side of things and where, you know, where's the money going to come from after this? Um, you know, when we, we've been talking to so many different business owners about, uh, you know, COVID-19 and, and the no. theme has been the same about refocusing and, and, and you know, going back to the beginning and, you know, dusting off that original plan to find right. out your why. Um, right. So, you know, that's a really, you know, what's your take on that step and, and your opinion on that? Well, first of all, I, I find that uh, many organizations, especially the new ones, don't know, how quite to say quickly enough what their value proposition is. Mm -hmm. And because I had to deal with uh, angel investors and venture capitalists, I learned that uh, if you can't say what you are and who you are and what you do in three to five minutes, uh, then you may have lost your opportunity to be funded. So uh, my, uh, my whole modus operandi is to get people to understand and to articulate very quickly who they are, what they do, and where they make, not so much what they do, but the impact of what they do or their product is on the market that they're trying to um, either service or change. Mm -hmm. um, many people, including charities, I give, um, I give uh, presentations to charitable boards on what a charity is. Uh, 
so many of them go out and ask for money quite early because they're passionate about the charity, but they aren't totally understanding of what the impact of the charity is on their community. And people don't care so much about how much you care, but they care about the organization's impact. And so you have to kind of turn it around. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite um, analogies of that was people don't give to the SPCA. They give to people who protect dogs or cats. Mm -hmm. And so instead of saying, would you please give to the SPCA because they do so many good things, you almost have to show a, a dog that's malnourished or a horse that's been misabused or any number of things. People get that. They don't have to be told. And so, so many small businesses haven't figured out what's my impact as opposed to what's my, what do I do? Yes. And yes. that's how I try to help people mm -hmm. get around that. That's and a long so, answer. I'm sorry. No, no. And that, and you know that, and it's, it's a great answer because, you know, as, as so many businesses are, you know, they're kind of, uh, you know, running around and, and they're seeing other businesses, you know, some businesses pivoted right away and that they had a product or service, they got it online. Um, but now we're starting to see, you know, after a whole month, businesses that close back on the 17th of March, they're starting to open and they're saying, okay, we, we thought about it, we made a plan and now we're gonna start opening our doors. And you know, they, you know, and they're calling back their staff and they're kind of looking at it. So they've either had time to think about it or they're just, you know, kind of uh, tired of, of sitting around. So, um, you know, we're seeing the, the difference of the people who pivoted right from the beginning and then the people who took some time to think about it. I have a very good, uh, I have a very good successful uh, friend and business owner who called me and said, you know, here's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, do you agree? Mm -hmm. And my, my first point to anybody that's going to restart, start from the beginning or restart is to understand your margins. Where do you make the most money? Because Many people are going to be anxious to want to get back and doing things, but if they do it at low margins, they're going to have to do 80, 90% of what they would do if they just paid attention to where they make their money. Mm -hmm. And so this is a great time for both old businesses and new businesses to understand where the margins are, where they make their money, and make sure that if they start back up, the first thing they're starting back up with is the profitable side of their business. Mm -hmm. um, I think the second one is know where the government uh, is taxing us and where the programs are because that will tell you what things the governments um, uh, will let you do or, or want you to do. You're, you're, the tax rates are always based on what governments want to see you do. And so if you look at the tax programs, you often understand where priorities are and where funding is to, mm -hmm. to make things happen. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah, very, very important points as well. Um, because sometimes when you drop those prices, you know, um, it sets a precedent as well. And then when we, when we come out of this, um, you know, the, the yeah. people might come to expect it. Um, yeah. yeah. So we, I chatted last week with a, with a business owner in the Moncton area and, you know, she was, you know, she said her advice was, you know, this is a really good time to change what you're doing. Right. Yes. And, and start looking at those things like your pricing and your services and what can you drop? What don't you like? She said, you know, it's also sometimes a good time to get out. <laughs> if you're, if you're wanting to get out, it's a good time to get out. I totally agree with that. I think that's, if, the, if anything, that's, you know, the third element you look at is, is, gee, if you had a business and you were doing things all along, this is a great time to look at those elements that you either weren't good at or didn't pay well, mm -hmm. or that you just plain didn't want to do anymore. And when you reopen, reopen with an enthusiasm to do the things that, uh, that make sense to you, not only make money for you, but make sense to do. Mm -hmm. Often the businesses that have a model that have been doing for a number of years are the ones that go out of business because a new business comes in and only does 
the profitable side, if you will. Right. And right. then somebody say, I've been doing that for years and I didn't make any money off it, but it's just the way that it's positioned, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So when we first talked, um, when you came on board as a mentor, um, you, you made the, you, you, told me uh, like a phrase of uh, that you sometimes people call you the rainmaker and you refer to that, <laughs> um, you know, how, uh, you know, what, what do you mean by that? And uh, cause I, I liked that conversation that we had, but you know, how do you see, you know, um, you know, those skills that you have, you know, being important to, you know, helping other small business owners through our program? It's a, um... I've been on LinkedIn since 2005, six, I can't remember when it was, um, which was, you know, is one of the early um, apps for connecting people. I just got off it the other day because I found out that the LinkedIn CEO quit so he could sell his stock and make millions. Oh. <laughs> that was a moral judgment statement rather than a smart move, but sometimes you do that. Um, I found out early on, both when I worked for corporate uh, soft, uh, computer companies as well as my own, that you never knew who was going to be important to you down the road. And so it's important that when you meet somebody, um, you know, there's kind of four tenets, um, you know, focus first on, on respect, for them, regardless of what their title is, uh, focus on uh, you know uh, uh, approaching them uh, early on in the game. Uh, have people coming to St. Andrews, and frequently, um, rather than waiting to find out who they are or what they are, I approach them mm -hmm. so that I'm on the front of that curve. Um, and, you know, focus on assisting them, and focus on doing them no harm. And if you look at those four elements of with everybody you meet, it's interesting how sometime over the next five months, six months, year, even two years, you have the ability to go back and say to that person, you know, um, what about this? Or I have a friend that needs to meet somebody or mm -hmm. whatever. And so it becomes this circle of people who, you can talk to and who trust you and um, who in turn will help you. Uh -huh. um, so I have, um, I, I keep being told, I have, when somebody needs to meet somebody or know somebody or be introduced, I often get the phone call saying, Vaughn, do you know how to do, how to get to this person? Uh -huh. And it's interesting that over, maybe it's just because I'm an old guy, but it's interesting that over a long period of time, I can call or email. Um, I never throw away a business card. I never throw away a phone number. Mm -hmm. And I never forget to give them something first so that I have the ability to go back and at least um, pick their mind a bit yeah. come the second time. And, you know, saying that this is the time that, that those skills or that, you know, that, that, you know, that, uh, you know, value is there because, you know, when we look at, you know, some of these businesses that have pivoted and you, yes. and, you know, you know, you, you remember those conversations and, you know, yes. for myself of, of helping and supporting businesses through the Oasis program all across the province, you know, I'm finding over the last month that I'm checking in with other people that I've met or connecting other people. But also, you know, when we look at pur our purchases, we're going yeah. back to those people who, you know, who helped me with something along the way. And so if I can, you know, buy something from their store or even those little things, it's about making those connections that, you know, everyone, you know, could be important to you some way. Well, and, and, and it's interesting you said at this time, uh, the, the problem with thinking about it now mm -hmm. is that it's too late to help you in this current time. Yeah. What you have to have as a business person, really good business people always do, if you've done it for a long time, then you understand that it's not in the good times that you need these people. Mm -hmm. It's in the questionable times and the shoulder times 
and the bad times. And you have had to build that currency with them way before. Right. Because the good people right now are getting calls and emails and requests coming out of their ears. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's just a good time to reset uh, for next time more yes. than for now. Yeah. But that's and what business is. It's all about planning for success in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Very true. So, you know, for the, for the people who, who will be watching and, you know, for all the, uh, you know, if you could give one, and you've given lots of advice this morning, but <laughs> if you could give, you know, one piece of advice that would be immediate for somebody to be able to do right away as soon as they finish watching this, what would that one piece of advice be? I have been keeping a diary since it's a journal, not a diary mm -hmm. since November, 1999. Wow. I have written down everything that I do in business and personal life during all that time. Mm -hmm. It, so I have, this is, this is book, 63 that started on april the first of this year so that's it's new but at the beginning of each of these books i do what i call the shackleton five and it's five questions that i ask myself before i enter each one of these sequences and it's who am i what do i care about what's my senior guiding principle what's my plan to accomplish my guide and what environment do i like and it's interesting in 63 journals how the answers to those questions change as you either mature, your business changes, your family changes, whatever takes place. I, I guess what I'm saying is try to journal as much as you can. At the end of every month, I make a list of what I accomplished and I have a list of what I want to accomplish the next month. Mm -hmm. It's, I know it sounds anal, but it's, it's all about recording and planning and understanding how much you accomplish because at the end of every month, even I'll look at what I accomplished during that month and I'll think, oh my goodness, I did this. I forgot I did that. And it gives you enforcement. Some of the things you're doing are actually working towards your success, even though you may be so up to your neck and troubles you can't remember the good stuff uh, so i'm sorry long answer no. short answer would be write stuff down mm -hmm. write it down write it down it um it'll help you remember um and it um it gives you a sense of accomplishment awesome well, thank you so much for your time, and uh, we look forward to having you in the uh, in the program. And um, and we got lots of great entrepreneurs that are waiting for our support. And as soon as as soon as we're done with with COVID, uh, we'll yeah. be in uh, in person in Charlotte County, and we look forward to having you in the program. I look forward to meeting you and them all the way along the steps. Take awesome. care. Thank you. Bye bye.